So good morning. Today's lesson is an algorithms and programming lesson, as in it's a computational thinking one. But there's, um, we're not focusing on the Python today. We're interested in the different ways that we can sort data. So this is the type of thing that can come up in a paper one, because we're interested in um, how we can sort data and why we need to sort data. So there are different algorithms, different ways of sorting data. Some are simpler and some are faster. Um, a bubble sort is the simplest one, but the trade-off of that is it's the slowest one, often the slowest one. So we want to be able to apply a bubble sort algorithm. That means like step through it on paper. Um, we don't have to implement it and write it in Python today. Uh, to a list of items. A list is a data structure that stores multiple values in order. And they could be numbers, which are like 3, 7, 2, 1. And we've got to sort them into 1, 3. I can't remember what I said. Uh, what well, 1, 2, 3, 7, put them in order. Or strings. So you can sort strings by putting them alphabetically. Um, and we should be able to recognize, identify when an algorithm is a bubble sort. Amend if there's a problem with it and it's not working properly. And trace through. That means if you've got some code, you should be able to step through, make a trace table and see how it manages to sort things in order. So why is it so important? What's the difference between ascending and descending? And do you know any others? I'll pause the video whilst we discuss. Fab, so there are other sorting algorithms like a merge sort, um, like a quick sort. Um, you learn a lot of more, uh, a, a lot of different algorithms in much more depth at A level. Today, we're only interested in a bubble sort. So it's nice and simple, but it's rather slow. Um, it's called a bubble sort because of what we'll see a little bit later. I don't think it's helpful um, to even look at the code yet until we see it on um, paper. So I still don't think this is particularly helpful. I think it would be more useful to, um, to watch it, really. So we're going to pause the video again. If you're watching this at home, you should watch this at your own pace. OK, so for activity two, we need to say what happens to the data. So first of all, we are going to um, look at these two values, 68 and 22. It says it's ascending, so the smallest value first. So we're going to need a swap there to put 22 in here and then 68 in here. And then I'm going to look at 68 and 95. So 68 and 95, well, I don't need to swap those around. So it's still 68 and 95. Sorry about my writing, that's supposed to be a 95. And then I'm looking at these two, 95 and 12. Well, 95 and 12, 95 is bigger. So I'm going to have to put the 12 in here from a swap and the 95 in here. Then I'm looking at 95 and 45. So which is the bigger out of those? Well, 95 bubbles up to here. So the 45 stays here. And then I'm comparing 95 and 31. Which of those is bigger? Well, the 95 bubbles up to the top and the 31 stays in there. So that's the end of the first pass. How many compares did you have to do? Oh, my goodness, I forgot to keep track. So let's go through again and keep a tally chart. So 68 and 22, that's one compare. The smallest one goes in first, and then the next one in here. Then I will look at 68 and 95. That's another comparison. Which is the biggest? Well, 95. So I leave the 68 there. Then I'm looking at 9. Oh, did I do the tally chart for that? I don't think I did. Then I've got 12 and 95. That's another comparison. So 95 is bigger. 12 goes in here. Then I'm comparing. Oh, that's a 12, not a 1. 95 and 45. So 95 bubbles up. 45 goes in here. And then another comparison is 95 and 31, which is bigger. 95, that bubbles up to the top, and we've got 31. How many swap? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I didn't keep track of that one, but you get the idea. What number bubbles up to the top position is 95. So once you've finished your first pass, we did have to do some swaps, so we need to do the next one. So let's think. I'm comparing 22 and 68. 22 is the smaller one. 68 is the bigger one. 
then I want to compare 68 with 12. So 12 is the smaller one. 68 bubbles up. Then I want to compare my 68 with 45, the next available one. So 68 is bigger, so 68 bubbles up, and 45 bubbles up, uh, sorry, just goes in here. I want to compare 68 with my next value in the list, which is 31. So 68 bubbles up because it's bigger than 31. 31 goes where 68 was, that's a swap. And then I would like to compare 68 with 95. Or do I need to? Well, no, I don't need to because I already know that 95 is the biggest number. But I had to do some swapping, so I need to do another pass. That's what you need to do here. It's just working through each pass, each iteration. And then activity three and four gives you some, um, some Python code. We'll pause and go through that in a bit. So let's have a look at activity three. If we load up the code here, hopefully it should be a working um, bubble sort algorithm. When it loads, let's see. So we have some numbers which are unsorted. And if we run it, we end up with some numbers that are sorted. So how does it work? Well, let's step through, control and full stop and see. We've got our unsorted list, control full stop. We've got a temp value and we've got swapped. Notice that in Edexcel GCSE Computer Science, they always declare your variables at the top. Even if it's completely unnecessary, that's just what they do. Then we work out the length of our list. So len is a built-in function that works out how many items are in the list. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine values. So length is about to get um, set to nine. There we go. While swapped is equal to true. Well, swapped is true at the moment. So this is going to happen at least once. Then we set that Boolean flag to false to say, well, we haven't swapped anything yet in the current pass. But if we do have to make any swaps, we'll set it to true so that we know we need to do another pass. Right, what's this doing? We've got a for loop, some iteration. For index. So index is going to count from zero up to the length of our list, minus one. Because remember, the length said we've got nine values, but the position of the ninth one is actually index eight. That's why we've got this minus one here. Then temp is the item at the position we're currently interested in. So index is zero. We store the value at the moment because we might have to overwrite it. That's why we've got this temporary value here. Then, oh, hang on, I missed out a line. I, did, I said if they're not in the order at the moment, if they're not in the right order at the moment, if the number at our current position, 77, is bigger than the number at our next position, 22, and in this case it is, 77 is bigger than 22, so we need to swap them. So that's why we stored the original value, 77, in temp. Then we can overwrite that value. Notice they're both the same at the moment. That's why we need to store it into temp, because at the beginning of our list, both numbers are the same at the moment. They're both 22. And then we overwrite the other one with 77. So that's the swap process. We store one of the values, we overwrite that value, and then we put that value in to the other one. Those three lines are just swapping. If we swap, we need to keep track of the fact that we swapped. Why? Because if we do any swaps, we need to do another pass. So swap is true. And then we go back around our for loop again. And then we keep checking to see if any swaps are necessary. So we've gone through that this algorithm works. If you press control and enter, it will sort the data regardless of what data you put in here. It does work, but it's inefficient because it does all of the swaps all the way through in every pass. Your job is just to copy and paste this line here, which says decrease the length that you need to iterate through, because we use length here, each time. So the first time we're going to check through the whole list. The next time, we're only going to check through that. Why? Because the 77 will have bubbled to the top. No, sorry, the, uh, the biggest number, the 99, will have bubbled to the top. And then the next time, the length will decrease. So we only want to check that and then that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So put it in the right place with the right indentation, and you'll find a place for it to work. When you've finished, we've got 20 minutes left of this lesson. Make sure you save this Word document, please, and upload it into um, half term eight, please. And it's the algorithms and programming eight 
half term eight. The rest of this lesson you can choose to revise for anything for computer science from your personalized revision um, target. So here we go. This is where we submit today, please. Half term eight, algorithms and programming eight. And then for your revision, you need to be clicking on the personalized target and revision summary. It will tell you what you've covered. Remember the exam will only cover stuff we've covered in the lesson. So let's skip ahead and see. We have not covered anything about data representation of images and sound um, in the data topic. We haven't covered um, issues and impact on artificial in intelligence, but we have covered a lot of the rest of issues and impact. Um, so focus your attention where you have the lowest competence score, which comes from your topic tests and the worksheets that you submit. Focus your attention on the ones that are not algorithms and programming, unless it's one of the topics that includes um, like tracing or searching and sorting, which we've done this topic as well.